This is an 80 pound welder from Team U. And this is an 800 pound welder setup from Artec, complete with trolley and gas. And this is someone who's never welded before in his life. But does price really make a difference to a noob like me? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. So let's get straight into it and compare these two welders side by side. First of all, we've got the one from Team U that costs around about 80 pound. It's a flux core gasless welder and comes with everything that you see here. Over here, we've got the Artec M181, the new one that's out now with digital presets to help you basically get the perfect weld. It costs around about 650 pound to 750 pound, depending on if it's on sale or not. But by the time you've added an ice trolley and a gas bottle, you're talking well over 800 pound for this setup. But let's have a look at them in closer detail. First of all, this is tiny and weighs absolutely nothing. Whereas this one's much bigger and much heavier, I'd say probably about four times as heavy as that little teamy one. But to be fair, this is about four times the size. So both welders come with a ground clamp. This is the one from Team U, feels fairly nice. And this is the one with the Artec, which feels a lot more solid and has a stronger spring to it. But to be fair, there's not too much difference. This is the torch with the Team U one. It feels fairly light, quite plasticky, but feels quite nice in the hand. And this is the Artec one. It feels fairly similar visually, other than the color. There doesn't seem to be a great deal of difference between the two. And both welders have a nice little digital display with a knob here on the Team U one. And on the Artec one, we have a flip up protective cover. And again, a nice digital display, but with a couple of knobs, one for voltage, one for wire speed and some buttons here. But again, as I mentioned earlier, this does have presets. So it will help you program everything nicely. So minimum effort when you come to doing the welding. So I'm looking forward to trying that one out. So next up, we have the wire compartment. And on the Team U one, it's quite cute and it fits this small half a kilogram reel of wire in there. The inside's quite plasticky around here. So the Artec one is much bigger, as you can see, and fits this five kilogram reel of wire in there like that. And the internals are all metal on this one. There's no plasticness there, like you see on this Team U one. But again, guys, is that gonna make any difference to my welds? And of course, the main difference between this Team U one and the Artec one is the Team U one doesn't have any gas. It relies on this fluxed wire to basically create the protective shield as you're laying down the beads of weld, like that. Whereas the Artec one has its own dedicated gas cylinder, like many MIG welders, and this basically is running a 95% mix. So I think that's a 95% argon, 5% CO2, and that creates a nice shield as you're laying down the welds with this torch, like this. But this welder can also run equally like that welder can, flux wire. So if you wanna run it without the gas and use it really mobile and just kind of pick it up and run around with it, then you can use that flux core wire and you don't need the gas bottle. So all in all guys, upon first impressions, they're both a little bit same, same. This one, albeit a little bit smaller, taking smaller wire than this bigger one, taking this bigger, heavier reel of wire. Essentially, they're both a metal box with a springy ground clamp and a plastic torch. So I think the only way to really tell if there's any feasible difference between the 800 pound setup and the 80 pound setup is for this novice to lay down his first weld. And I think I'm gonna start with the 80 pound one from Team U. Right guys, so I think we're all set up now and ready for my first bead of weld with this little Team U welder. Now I will leave a link in the description down below for all of these other bits and bobs that I bought to help with this video, including this really cool table, this XL table. It's a welding table, but I think it's gonna be really handy generally for around the garage. I've also got these Amazon basic clamps that I've used to clamp that piece of metal down. And we've also got these magnets as well, which I'm sure will come in really handy. But without further ado, let me lay my first bead of weld down with this Team U welder. Oh my God, that was terrible. Let me show you. <laughs> what is that? Absolute little snaky thing. I think we can do better than that. Let me have another go. Maybe turn the voltage up a tiny bit more and turn the darkness on my helmet up a little bit because it was quite dark and we'll see if we can do that a little bit better. Oh, 
Right guys, so here we go. First couple of attempts with that Team U welder. This doesn't look quite right. I mean, I did get a slightly straighter line there. It's, I think that's called penetration. It's gone all the way through, but it looks shocking and it doesn't seem to be coming out very fast. So I think the wire speed is dictated by the voltage on there, but it's probably not that good. So not great. Let's have a go with the Artec one and see if that's any different. Right, attempt number two. Let's try it again, but with the Artec this time. Woo! Oh, yeah! Oh, let me bring you guys over and have a look at this bad boy. So straight away, guys, I've just had three little goes with that Artec, and look, the third attempt there. Look how nice that is compared to compared to these ones. These splattery, spluttery, weird little things. That is just so clean and crisp. Obviously there's gas on this one from there, which creates that boundary. So there's less splatter and splutter, but yeah, not great at all. You could argue and say, well, this is my sixth bead now. So gradually getting better. One, two, three. Four, five, six. It's a possibility. We might have to have a little bit more practice to get a full determination whether this Team U welder is actually any good. But straight out the box with this Artec, I am buzzing. Look at that. I mean, you might be watching this saying, that's rubbish, but I'm pretty pleased with that. Now I did just work out on that last bead. If I kind of lean over and rest the gun on my finger, I get more control and I can do a straighter line. Whereas this first one with the Team U one, I was kind of free holding it like that, so I was moving around all over the place. So we will do a bit more practice with both welders because I've <laughs> but I have got a load of off cuts of metal here from one mil all the way up to five mil thickness. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut to a little montage and I'm gonna use both the Team U and the Artec welder and stick some of these plates together and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at how we got on. <laughs> Well, as much as it pains me to say it, it's time to move back over to the Team U welder. Boom! And just like that, we are back at the bench with both test pieces. We've got the ones from Artec here, and we've got the ones from the Team U here. Let me bring you down now, and we'll have a look at the difference. Right, so here we go. Both sets of welds, Team U and Artec. I decided to do the Artec first so I could get a little bit of an experience on my belt doing some beads before I moved on to the Team U one so there wasn't any excuses for the Team U one being literally my first welds. So first off the bat let's have a look at these little test strips we did to start with. So these were three lines we did. One, two, three. This one with the Artec just looks nice and straight. It just was effortless. The Team U flux core one on the other hand looks more like some kind of snail trail or bird poo. It's quite splattery and it doesn't look particularly nice, but it has penetrated because you can see the, the discoloring on the other side of the metal. So it's not the prettiest, but it's a weld, I guess. The second one I did with the Artec was this. I joined basically two pieces of thin one mil mild steel together with some spot welds, a series of spot welds, just dabbing it all the way along so as not to bend and distort the metal. So that's kind of the finished look there. It's not the prettiest guys. It is literally my first time welding, so please don't judge me. But this was exactly the same with the Team U one. So again, loads of just little spot welds, but they're so inconsistent in terms of the size. It was like spluttering and splattering, and it was not as easy as it was with the Artec one. But again, it has gone through. It's penetrated really well, quite a lot of discoloring there. More inconsistent discoloring to the Artec one though, interestingly. If we look at them both, 
back to back. I don't quite know what that means, but you guys let me know in the comment box if you do. So moving up in the world, I did have a go at kind of joining two one mil pieces of mild steel together in like a, a box section. However, the pieces were kind of not fully touching, so I ended up blowing holes through a lot of these because there was gaps. So not necessarily the welder's fault, more user error. I had a go with this one. This time I put the pieces up overlapping, so one kind of overlapped the other, so it had something properly to weld to. So again, not the prettiest, but you could argue it's probably done the job, but we'll find out shortly. Next, I did a couple of two and a half to three mil pieces, just joined them together and just did a seam weld along there. And at this point now, I'm starting to get a little bit more confident in the kind of speed. So two nice, fairly stable beads there. Pretty pleased with that. This side, not quite the same. So this was the, again, that two to three mil steel. And I tried to just do a, a steady, consistent bead, but that team you welder down there, it was just kind of like inconsistent. Again, the, the wire speed wasn't consistent. It would kind of come out and splutter, then it would pause and then it would go again. And it took ages to go along there, like probably three times as long as this. This Artec one was just straight away smooth, steady way all the way along like this. This team you one was, yeah, as you can see, but again, does that make a difference in terms of its strength? We'll find out shortly. Next up, I did an inside butt joint with this three mil or two and a half, three mil piece. So I just did a nice little bead along there. Not too bad, fairly steady. It's not the prettiest again, but you could probably argue it'll certainly do the job, but we'll find out shortly. And then again, with the team welder, pretty ugly, very splattery and spluttery, but that's what you get with flux wire versus the gas. It has penetrated through, so again, we'll see if that's a strong weld or not. And then finally, we move on to the five mil. So this is a pretty thick piece and I did an outside butt, I think that's what he called it. So with the Artec one, if you've got it plugged into a normal 240 mains plug, it runs around about, I think, 160 amps. Whereas if you plug it into the 16 amp plug, like I've got down here, it runs at about 180 amps, so the full speed. So actually, when I did the settings on the Artec one over there, I think the maximum I could put in with the 0.8 mil wire was four millimeter steel. So I had that up almost to max. So it hasn't quite penetrated through like I thought it would, but it feels like a really nice join anyway. Whereas the Team U one, I turned it up to like 5.7 mil, supposedly that goes up to, and that's supposedly 160 amps but there's quite a sizable difference between the two. So I don't know how true that is, but interestingly, this has kind of penetrated all the way through. You can see the discoloring. So maybe if I knock the Artec one up another few volts, we might've got all the way through. But again, we'll see the difference between that one and this one in terms of the strength. But in terms of how the weld looks, it's pretty darn ugly. Again, compared to this one. I'm quite pleased with this one actually. So, there we go. Two very different welds visually, but let's see if they're any good with a hammer test. One mil sheet metal join with Team U. Rubbish. One mil sheet metal join with Artec. Rubbish. To be fair guys, that's probably my welding and probably a little bit overkill for those little spot welds, but we'll move on. So this is the three mil or 2.5 to three mil sheet metal seam with Artec. Oh yeah, that's a good weld. It's bent the metal straight the way there, not moved along that seam. In fact, I'm probably gonna break my bench, so that is a win for our tech. Team U, two and a half to three mil sheet metal seam join. Yeah. To be fair, good on you, Team U. Yep, that's a win for Team U. Next up, we've got Team U, two and a half to three mil inside join. Oh. Fail for Team U. Wah, wah, wah. Two and a half to three mil join with the Artec inside butt. I 
That's a win for Artec. Yeah, boy. Next up, we have the Artec 5mm outside butt join. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Fair play, Artec. Let's try the Team U 5mm join. Has it penetrated? All right, we wanted. Yeah, to be fair, not bad. Not bad. Right guys, so the verdict. Well, surprisingly, both welders actually stuck metal together. However, there was some slight variation in the aesthetics of the welds, as you can see. But with the Artec one, it just felt effortless. It felt really nice being behind it. It gave me a lot of confidence when I was laying those beads down. And I think that with not too much more practice and time under my belt, I can probably get some fairly consistent welds with that Artec welder. The Team U one, on the other hand, I'm not really sure. As you can see here, the welds were just really inconsistent. They were, they were spluttery and splattery with that flux core. They didn't seem to be a consistent feed with a wire, and that kind of really plays out in the way the welds look. However, saying that, they still have held up. They're still pretty strong, but maybe that just is the difference between an 80 pound welder and an 800 pound welder setup. But pros and cons, you've got the confidence and the quality behind the Artec one. You've got the cheapness of the Team U one. But whichever one you go for, you're still gonna need a few other things like some gloves, like a decent welding helmet. So this is an Artec one, around about the 100 pound mark, but you can get much cheaper ones. But that was great. And I'd also recommend some kind of welding jacket or welding shirt because if you're using that 80 pound flux one, it's gonna be spitting stuff all over and you definitely don't want that down your shirt or on your arms. So, is quality better and does it make a noob like me do better welds? Well, technically, yes. However, as with any new skill, it's not always about the gear, it's about getting your hands dirty and just giving things a go. However, good gear does help. And I think I'll always be able to get better welds with this Artec welder as a beginner than we'll ever be able to get with this Team U welder. So guys, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you wanna see how I get on with these welders on that Defender 110 outside, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tune in for the next video. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.